In this video, we'll be taking apart the FossiBot S2. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, we'll need to remove the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see there's no rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. And there's a lot of adhesive underneath it, so it's going to take you some time prying it off. As for the camera lens covers, those can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. At this point, there are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now a pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing can now be slightly lifted up, but be careful since the flex cable for the power button is still attached to the main board. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The back housing is also made of plastic. The LED flash is located here, and this is the NFC antenna. Taking a look at the other side, we see antenna flex cables are on the border, as well as some graphite film to help transfer heat. We can also see that the two other cameras aren't real, and they're just there for aesthetic purposes. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a look at the 4900 milliamp hour battery. When it comes to replacing the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the back housing, you'd have to disconnect the battery cable, these flex cables, as well as this one connecting the subboard to the main board, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cables back to the openings in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. As for the coaxial cable, that can be disconnected by just popping it off. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we can see the 50 megapixel primary camera, and this camera does not have OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also a thermal pad over this chip. Looking at the other side, we can see the proximity sensor, the 16 megapixel front facing camera, 
as well as a SIM and memory card reader. There's also a graphite pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we see thermal pads on top of the RAM and processor. And here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, there's a rubber gasket around the charger port, and the primary microphone is located here. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located over here on the bottom corner, and the loudspeaker is located on the other corner, both of which are held down with some adhesive, so if you need to replace those, just apply some heat and pry them off. The flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons is located on this side, and that can be replaced by peeling it off the frame. There's also a thermal pad which sits underneath the main camera, and the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.